Welcome to our series of short videos on SUSE Manager 4. This is part 3 and today we're going to register our first client. SUSE Manager 4 supports many different clients in the form of different uh, Linux distributions, different versions within those distributions and many features that are supported accordingly. The link at the bottom of the page shows where to find the SUSE 4 documentation and for a more detailed description on the clients and their capabilities, I would certainly recommend reading the client configuration guide before you deploy in a production environment. To configure our first client, we have to decide whether to use a traditional connection method, which is essentially SSH, or preferably the new SALT method, which um, which increases the available features. So there's three ways of registering a client. First is the web UI, the preferred way. If you want a little bit more control or you have multiple servers you want to register at the same time, you can use bootstrap scripts. Or finally, if you want complete control on it, you can use commands. Activation keys are to ensure your clients have the correct software entitlements, are connected to the appropriate channels, and are subscribed to the relevant groups. An activation key is a group of configuration settings with a label. You create an activation key for every type of client. You may even have several keys for the same product. The first step towards registering a client is to make sure that it can resolve the SUSE Manager host name. So short name Pick its long name that's all we need and Susan manager we just need to make sure we can also resolve the client's name short name name. All good. We're set to go. Going to sign into Susan Manager and the first screen you're always presented with is the overview screen. On the left hand side here we have um, a navigation panel where you can access all features. There's a search bar across the top here which is uh, quite handy if you're not quite sure where in the list things are so for example if we want to do our setup wizard we can just start writing typing setup and it will bring up wizard and takes you to where you need to be if um, another one is like notification messages there's always more than one way to do things so if you click on notification messages here you see all the messages that are in the log that might need your attention or you can do some actions on. Likewise, if you want to see those notifications, there's also the little bell up here. Click on that, it takes you to the same place. Now under systems, there's the overview. Um, as you can see, there's nothing in our system list at the moment, but we are going to fix that very soon. There's also things like system list and actions that you can do on it, um, information you can find out about your installed systems. There's system groups, bootstrapping, activation keys, which is the one that we're going to start working on now. So let's just go and click on that. Now, activation keys, as I mentioned in the intro, can be quite important for performing tasks, especially if you have different levels of operating system and different distributions perhaps that you're managing their life cycle of as well. So having activation keys that describes each of those systems and what they're made up of can save a lot of time. So the first thing we're going to do is create an activation key for our client that we're going to install and it's going to be a 
SLES 15 Service Pack 1. So first we will give it a description, which needs to kind of explain exactly what it is. So we'll start with, um, what is it? It's SLES 15 ESP1. It's um, going to have all possible um, features in it. So let's just make it, call it general. It's going to be for the x86, 64 architecture, and we'll just call it activation. So just so we know what it says, it's something that's nice and descriptive. Um, for the key, we will just leave that and it will generate its own. We don't want to limit how many times this key is used or, or how many machines that can be made with it. And that's, so now we've got to select a base channel. So our base channel will be SLES 15 Service Pack 1 pool. When we select that, that's our parent channel. And we can now s select other products within that that we might want to include. So because we're going to make it a general one, let's just include everything in that. You could, if you want to do something specific, you might only say have the mandatory channels and maybe something else in there that's appropriate to those particular servers that you uh, that you will be setting up. Add-on system types, we can specify here whether it's going to be maybe a build server or a container build host or something else. In this case, we're not going to. We'll just leave that as default and we will create the activation key. As you can see, it's populated the key there now. And we are in business to now register our first system. We go to systems. We go to bootstrapping. We enter the fully qualified host name here of the client, which was slayers 15 test dot port. We leave it 22 standard SSH port. We'll use the root user, give it the password we set. Now we can give it an activation key, which is the one we created earlier. We don't need a proxy. We leave strict host key checking enabled. And we hit bootstrap. All things being equal, it will go out and we'll talk to the system and start adding it as a client. It can take a few minutes to do this. Usually if it doesn't give you an error within 20 seconds or so then it's usually a very good sign. Okay it took about three and a half minutes to in real time to uh, go out and um, communicate with the client and set itself up and as you can see from the message there that shortly the new client will appear under systems we can use the link there and here we have our first client information if we click on them.